Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about AI, so artificial intelligence, and how does that affect our sports photography. Okay, so we're going to be dividing this video into two different sections. One will be Adobe's new feature, which is to generate fill with just words. Uh, it's still in beta, but it's quite amazing. And the second section is about chat GPT and how both of those affect our sports photography. If you want to skip to a specific section, just look in the description of the video, click the timestamp and it'll take you there. The first one we're going to be talking about is Adobe's Generative Fill. Uh, if you want to try it out, you need to have a subscription with Adobe, obviously. And when you open the apps, you'll have an option to install uh, Photoshop's beta version. Now let's jump into Photoshop beta just so I can show you how it looks like. And then after that, we come back and talk about how will that affect our sports photography. All right, so in Photoshop with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to make a selection in my forehead. Going to click on generate. Obviously, I need to agree to the terms and conditions of Adobe. And I'm just going to type uh, dark brown hair, click generate. Now, this is in real time. You're seeing how long it takes to generate. I think it's quite fast. But for demonstration purposes, obviously, in the next changes that I'm going to be making in this video, I'm going to speed it up just so that we don't have to wait as long. Obviously, you'll need an internet connection to do this. Now, once it finishes, it's going to give you three different variations that you can pick from. As you can see, it looks quite realistic. If you don't like them, just click generate again, and it's going to generate three more variations that you can pick from. Now, remember, this is still in beta. So it's not even a full launch, but it's scary how powerful it is while still in beta. Okay, so it generated three more, so I just skip through them to see if there's one that I like. If I don't like, I can maybe try curly hair instead. So let's type curly hair, click generate, wait a few seconds. There you go. Does it look realistic, you tell me? Maybe it looks like a, like a wig. I don't know. I mean, for the effort that I had to generate curly hair, it is quite amazing. Let's switch this to brown hair. And I think it didn't do a very good job this time around because I think the selection that I had was just from the middle of my forehead upwards. So for long hair, maybe I wanted to make a bigger selection with the lasso tool, perhaps to, to get a more uh, realistic feel, right? So if you ask for long hair with a very short selection, I don't think uh, Photoshop can do that quite well. Now, I'm just going to select my body, so everything except for the neck, okay? And it's a very, very rough selection, as you can see. And I think I'm going to type something along the lines of bodybuilder body with a black tank top and some tattoos, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think that's it. Yep. And some tattoos and click on generate and let's speed it up again and here we go so some of the variations don't look that realistic they look kind of plasticky but some look very good again if you don't like it just click generate again it's going to generate three more and you can flip through them to see what they look like even the lighting you can see the right arm that we're looking at facing us so my left arm will have a little bit more light because there was more light coming in from that side it's incredible quite quite incredible now selecting myself again I'm just gonna uh, make a selection around my eyes to give my son myself some sunglasses so that's all I'm gonna be typing sunglasses generate and see what the tool does wait a few seconds and there you go that one looks a little bit crooked perhaps you can flip through them and tell me what you think even have a reflection in one of the lenses it's, it's, it's quite crazy and the reflection is coming from the side of the picture that has more light it's quite quite incredible so now you just pick one and that's it now your imagination I guess is the limit but it's quite quite powerful and remember this is still in beta so who knows what this will do when it's a full full launch right so you can see just how easy it was to select a section in the image 
type a few words, pick a variation and done. That's it. Now, how does that affect our sports photography? I don't think it, it affects us at all, to be honest, at this time. I think we will still need pictures that are taken in real time, uploaded to the web to, you know, showcase uh, what what is happening in the football match or whatever we're not going to be we're not going to be changing parts of the picture the photography that i think will affect this a, a lot will be people who do landscape photography people who plan trips to go somewhere and wake up at a specific time to be there at early in the morning to watch the sunrise for example or wait for the perfect weather conditions and the lighting conditions and whatnot just to have that specific setting that they need for that epic picture whereas with photoshop you can just generate clouds lighting objects whatever for those types of photographers i think this new generative field from photoshop is quite the nightmare for us sports photographers I don't think it poses a danger. At least in my opinion, I might be naive, but as of right now, I don't see how this could be used in sports photography. If we're talking about real events, if we're talking about promotions like marketing and whatnot, then yeah, sure, it can help quite a lot. But for being truth tellers, so just taking a picture of what's actually happening and sending it up for newspapers or online websites or whatnot, I think we're, we're good for now at least for now I think AI will move and it will affect us eventually when we can have cameras being operated completely independently so without the need of a human being then we're in trouble until that happens I think we'll be okay now for the second section of this video we're gonna be talking about AI in the form of chat box so Surely you will have heard of chat GPT and what it means basically like you're trying to have a conversation uh, with a robot AI and you ask questions and it's going to give you answers. Let's look at some examples. All right, so this is the web page for chat GPT and I'm just going to start typing questions as if I were having a conversation with uh, a teacher, I guess. Can you explain the exposure triangle for me, please? And let's see what it says. There you go. It just starts typing and explaining everything from from the aperture and what it means. It's incredible. It's quite quite incredible. Shutter speed obviously. And now the ISO will come up next surely. Of course. An incredible thing here is that you could literally just copy paste this and make a blog and there you go done it's pretty much done obviously you need to take everything with a grain of salt uh, not everything that you see here is completely accurate so do check different sources to make sure that what you're seeing is is correct but it's, it's a very, very good resource to have. So I'm going to ask you another question. What camera settings should I use for sports photography? Let's see what it says. It's thinking, I guess, because it's taking a little bit. There we go. Okay, yeah, so specific camera settings for fast-paced action. Yes. Now it starts talking about shutter speed. And some suggestions, then the aperture talks about lighting, yes, depth of field, the ISO. It is quite incredible, quite incredible. Obviously, it's it's very generic. So if you want something more specific, then you might want to change uh, your question. But it's also going to talk about autofocus first mode the white balance exactly starting point I agree uh, and then you need to change depending on the conditions that you're shooting in yes practice and experiment different settings to find the combination that works best for the sport lighting and your desired creative outcome I could not agree more okay so let's be a bit more specific and ask chat GPT how can I photograph um, a backlit subject and let's see what it says 
Let's see if it gives a good answer or not. Exposure compensation, yes. Spot metering or manual mode, yes, absolutely. What else? Fill flash or reflectors, well, wouldn't really use flash in sports photography, but then again, I was not very specific in my question. Uh, the silhouette effect. Yes, you can do that as well. Lens flare, talking about composition, positioning. It's very, very uh, detailed in the answer. And again, remember to practice and experiment exactly um, to, to find the right approach. So if you want more specifics, I guess you will need to be more specific in your question. So how does this affect sports photography? Well, it might affect a few YouTubers. So if you're not certain about how to photograph a specific situation or the difference between full frame and crop or something like that. Well, you had Google, but now you can have a conversation. It's It feels a bit more fluid, right? Is it perfect? Of course it's not perfect. And I don't think it replaces, you know, the proper photography teacher, uh, someone with good knowledge. And take all that's said in AI with a huge grain of salt. But I think it can be very useful if you don't have, if you cannot find results or videos or pages that talk about very specific subject that you would like to, to ask a question about, try this out. Maybe it'll be helpful. I don't see how it cannot be. Um, that's it for today. I think AI obviously will be in the future. It's going to get crazier and crazier it'll be very hard for us to tell the difference between what's real and what's not but it's the world that we live in and we just gotta deal with it i guess if you like this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're not already and until next time take it easy guys stay safe